Our worship comes from 2 Thessalonians 3.16. If you guys want to read this with me, that'd be great. Now, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. I know you came to rescue me, this baby boy would grow to be a man and one day die for me and you. My sins would drive the nails in you, that rugged cross was my cross too, still every breath you drew. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Philippians chapter 4, as we, today we're focusing on peace. So um, as we go through Advent, remember Advent's just a fancy, fancy word for coming, as we're looking forward to the coming of Christ and looking back and celebrating his first coming. um, Today, as as we kind of focus is, our focus is on peace. And I'll admit to you, I, I, I loved all of the videos in that video series, you know. But that last phrase on that video that, you know, let peace start begin with me. Sorry. Doesn't begin with us. Peace doesn't begin with me. And I'm glad, because I'm not very good at it. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. If not, it'll be right up here. Philippians 4, starting in verse 4, reading in Jesus' name. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in, wait a minute, I better back up and read that just one more time. Just in case anybody missed that part. Not my word. Remember, I said in Jesus' name. So this is God's word, not Jay's word. Do not be anxious about anything. That's hard. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Doesn't mean that we're going to get everything that we pray for. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Here ends the reading of God's Word. It's the peace of God that begins real peace. It's the peace of God that is way beyond anything that we could think or imagine. It's the peace of God that's really effective. You you say to yourself, how on earth am I going to rejoice in all times? There's some really rough stuff happening, Pastor Jay. How do you say that? Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. Have I been shopping during, at, during Christmas season? Yes, I have. I even worked retail for years. I'm not working retail anymore. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. How can, how can I say all of these things? It's because of what comes at the end. It's the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. That's where it all starts. And I wanted to make sure that you heard that before we went into praying today. I wanted to make sure that I said it before I went into our prayer request for today because because this week I'm having trouble rejoicing. This week I'm having trouble with anxiety. Because Ethan's not getting better. We've been praying for, praying for Ethan, and, and I'm just going to ask you to just keep praying for Ethan. 
I, I don't know how to pray anymore. I don't know what to say. All I know is that I don't have the answers, and God does. And so in the midst of Ethan not, not recovering like we had hoped, And I know I'm not the only one. I'm just having trouble rejoicing. And so it's not my peace that starts it off. I'm not, it's not, peace doesn't begin with me. It's got to begin, it's got to begin with God. Dave Pudwell asked me to uh, pray for uh, someone in his family who recently attempted suicide. so thankful that then another family member came in and, and was able to save him in time and rush him to the hospital and he, they're just now starting to see some glimmers of hope that he'll recover and so as we, as we pray I promise I'll be honest and open with you I'm not going to lie to you I'm not going to just put on a happy face and say everything's going to be great you know, but we are going to go to the Lord together because the hardest thing to pray is, Lord, what do you want? I know he's able to, to heal Ethan in a moment. I know that he's able to heal, um, you know, the, that family member in, in, in David Pueblo's family, you know. So let's pray. God, you're awesome. You really are. You just, you blow us away. You're good and you're gracious, you're loving, and you do all of it perfectly. And so we rejoice in who you are and what you've done because you are the beginning of peace. And I know that we all experience conflict and anxiety. You are the beginning of peace. So in the middle of everything that's happening right now, Lord, in the middle of political conflicts, in the middle of family conflicts, in the middle of just conflicts within our heart and our soul, we confess that peace begins with you. Lord, I, I love Ethan. We love Ethan. The Gilberts love Ethan. This community loves Ethan. And so, Lord, we're just praying for your best. Your best for Ethan. We trust you, Lord. We lift up to you Dave Pudwell's uh, relative who, who attempted suicide. And, Lord, you know exactly what's going on in his heart and in his mind. And the physical healing is only just the tip of the iceberg, Lord God, and we pray for healing for him, to, that you would draw him back to yourself. And Lord, I know that at this, at this time there's a lot of different prayer requests going on out there, and so Lord, just pray that you would be with each and every person today. There's spoken prayer requests, there's unspoken prayer requests. you draw near to them. Lord, we, uh, we worship you. We worship you with the reading of your word. We worship you with prayer. We worship you with uh, communion. We worship you with singing. We worship you with our giving. Lord, that we pray that nobody would feel like they have to give. That giving is just a part of worship. Everything that we have is a gift from you. So we thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to give right off the top to you. And we thank you for the gift of your Son to us. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
So I mentioned today's uh, theme is on peace, and I think that that's something that we could all agree on. We could all use some peace, correct? Um, so, where's your conflict? Conflicts in your head. Yeah. Thoughts just kind of argue with each other, right? Where's your conflict? Hmm. I think I heard somebody say, in my heart. I get that because um, sometimes even our, what we love and care for is that conflict. Where's your conflict? Sometimes with God, yeah. I, uh, I sat with somebody this week who, who was having some conflict with God. Doesn't mean you don't love him. Doesn't mean he doesn't love you. Nothing's going to stop that. Doesn't mean there's not going to be conflict, conflict with the people that we love, right? I mean, hello, correct? Where's your conflict? Okay, so nobody had to argue with anybody about coming to church today. Is that correct? Yeah, everybody, everybody was all cool. You guys woke up this Sunday, you know, said, hey, let's go to church this morning. And everybody's like, praise Jesus. Yeah, we're going to church. The whole house just woke up singing songs to God, saying, I can't wait to go to church. Is it like that for you guys? Yeah, yep, just like that at your house. That's good. You got only two at the house, so it really helped out. I'll admit, I've been, I've been saved from this my, you know, for a really long time. You see, because you know, part of the gig of, of, of being a pastor is most of the time I'm out of the house before my family's even up. And so Heidi just graciously wakes up the family and drives everybody here. It's pretty awesome. Unless we show up with like three or four cars. Then you know, oh, it must have been a dog. If, if I go outside and I count that there's like four cars out there, I'm like, whoa, oh, good morning, I missed. <laughs> yeah. Conflict happens in families all the time. Some of you got to meet my brother last week. I love my brother. He and I are like best friends now. It was not always like that. Um, One Saturday morning, I have no idea what we were fighting over, but my dad had had it. I mean, he had had it, and we were, we were too old to be fighting, let's put it that way. <laughs> so he took both of us, and, and we were just in our gym shorts, we were just hanging out downstairs, and he took both of us and he threw us out to the back porch in the winter. The back porch had this, like, circa 80s, like, faux grass on it. This green kind of weird stuff. Very, very sharp. My brother and I just wrestled and beat on each other for I don't know how long until all of a sudden it was like, eh, and our entire bodies were covered in, like, rug burns. At which point we're like, I'm good, you good? <laughs> Showering just like stung like acid, you know? I'm like, what were we thinking? I should not have that kind of conflict with my brother. I love my brother. I can't say that, I mean, I've got the best kids ever and I, and I love, love, love my kiddos. It's not free from conflict at our house though. I remember one wonderful Saturday with my own ch kids, and I don't know what the conflict was over, but I threw them outside too. Like, works for my dad, you know? But instead of just throwing them outside to, like, beat each other senseless, that worked for my brother and I. It doesn't really work in our household, you know? Um, I gave them a, a, a bag, and... 
some, um, some surgical gloves. Yep. And I said, go pick up dog poop together. <laughs> there is no, there's no better way to bond than picking up poop. And doing it together is just such a special bonding experience. And the reason why I do that is because of what the text brings out. You see, conflict has this way of separating us, right? Conflict has a way of separating us. Sometimes we do the separation intentional. I need a minute to cool down. I'm giving dad himself a time out to go into the other room. No, but conflict has this way of separating us into, you know, and we, we separate from each other and we separate from God. And so if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. And uh, if you don't, don't sweat it. It's going to be right up here. Ephesians 2, verse 11, reading in Jesus' name. And let's take a look at this conflict and what, what God does about it. Therefore, remember that at one time, you Gentiles... Gentiles is just a word for anybody who's not Jewish. Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision. We're not going to get into circumcision today. We'll talk about it later. By what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Again, we'll talk about that later. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ. You see, the first separation... Is between us and God. Remember that at that time you were separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise. Promise. Having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus Christ. For he himself is our peace. Jesus is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by the, abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances so that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two. So making peace, and he might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and he preached peace to you who are far off, and he came and preached peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Here ends the reading of God's Word. At, at the very core of our human condition is conflict. And conflict Conflict comes from, well, most of the time, co conflict for me comes from me wanting what I want. I want what I want, and I don't want to let it go. It, it, all, if you want a lesson in conflict, please, just stop by a daycare. All you got to do, just hang out on the edge for just a little bit and just wait. Just give it a couple of minutes. Conflict's going to happen because somebody's got the new train. And somebody else wants the new train. And it takes about two seconds for that train to hit the ground. And as soon as that hand comes off the train, then multiple hands grab for the new train. And everybody wants it. And there's immediate conflict. It's easy to pick on little kids. You guys do the exact same thing. Whatever it is that you're grabbing for, whatever it is that you want, that somebody else wants or somebody doesn't want you to have conflict. And conflict really starts with sin. 
Sin starts the first conflict. You think about it, you know, the very first sin created separation between Adam and Eve. The very first sin created separation between God and man. Every time we've got conflict, we've got separation. And that's our natural tendency. We're in conflict, we separate. We have an argument, I'm not talking to you. We don't agree on something, that's it. We're not friends anymore. If it's really, really bad, I unfriend you. <laughs> and I'm not following your Instagram either. So there. <coughs> Separation comes from conflict. And so God sent Jesus to bring peace. The first piece is not this relational piece, though. The first piece that God brings is peace between us and Him. And that's the foundation for our peace with each other. Founda the peace with God creates the foundation so that we can have peace with each other. You see, no matter where you're at with God, whether you're far off, you feel like you're real close. Christ came and brought peace. So stop for a second. I won't make you do this one out loud. How's that sound? Just between you and God. How's your relationship? Are you feeling far off? Or are you feeling real close? Just do a little check with your relationship with God. No matter where you're at, whether you're feeling far away or whether you're feeling real tight, Christ came and preached peace by dying on a cross for our sins, by taking all of the sins away and forgiving them. He brought you close to God the Father. There's no longer any separation there. And so oftentimes the separation that we feel between us and God is really just us, and that's how we feel. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, he has removed the separation from you. You have access. You have belonging. And it's that peace with God that helps us get the peace with each other. Because when God brought us near, when Jesus, when he died on the cross to save us of our sins, to pay for and remove that separation, he brings us closer to God, but he also brings us close together. He's putting us together into a whole new body, the church, his church. And we will never be any more separated than from one hand to the other. Because if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you're a part of Christ's body. And that means you're connected, you belong. And he's the one who did that. And so if you've got conflict, Jesus wants to speak words of peace. Hear these words again. For he himself is our peace. Verse 14. Verse 17. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off, and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers. God knows you. God knows you. And the aliens. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Peace starts with God. Peace starts with Christ and what he did for us on the cross. And as he removes our sin, he removes the conflict. He removes the separation. He draws us closer to him. And in the process, he draws us closer to each other. Let's pray. 
God, thank you. We couldn't have done this on our own. The peace, all of my efforts to make peace just end, usually end up with more conflict. So thank you, Jesus, for being our peace. We need, we need you, Jesus. We need the peace that only you can give, the peace that, that transcends our understanding, the peace that, that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We need your peace to resolve our conflict with you. We confess to you we are sinners. We want our own way. We fight like toddlers over a train. We need peace that only you can give. We need peace with you, and I just want to thank you, Lord, for speaking, speaking peace to, to all of us. Whether we're close to you and, and believing in you already, or whether we're far off and we're just starting to believe and seek you now, you speak peace. And you don't leave us alone. You bring us together. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us peace. Help us to live in your peace, even as conflict tries to invade. Invade our heads, invade our hearts, invade our, our relationships. Help us to trust in you and in your peace. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders, wonders of His love. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look right at you and give you his peace. Amen? Go in peace and serve the Lord. Hey, so welcome to uh, Second Annual Christmas Social. We're going to sing some songs tonight, listen to some songs tonight, uh, play a couple games, and hopefully just get to know each other a little bit better uh, as, as the night as the night goes along. So, um, yeah, find a spot, find a spot. Um, there'll be things in the, oh, we'll, we'll get to what's on your table and what to do with that in a little bit. But uh, first off, these guys are gonna sing. This, this choir, yeah, do you wanna say something? I do. I just want to let you know what we're singing tonight. We're doing a song called God Bless Us Everyone. It's actually from uh, Walt Disney's A Christmas Carol. And, um, oh, somebody recorded it. Who was it? <laughs> yeah, somebody other than me. Uh, Andre Buscelli. He's got it on his CD. So if you're interested in a fun CD, uh, that song is on there. So anyway, um, that's what we're singing tonight.